everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like button. Yeah, you know the, the spiel. Let's talk about the books I managed to accumulate in the month of March. Because despite the fact that I read over 20 books in March, I believe, I still managed to accumulate more. In my sort of defense, not all of these were purchased. I won a couple awards, or not awards. I won a couple giveaways and a couple were gifted to me from friends and a couple came in from work. But... These are the new books that I have in my hands. So right off the bat, my copy of Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan came in actually a couple days early. Thank you, pre-orders. It is beautiful. I read the arc. I did a single review for it. I absolutely love this book. I'm so excited for the sequel, number two. I also found out number two is going to have some, I guess, like, well-known video game character with bi reps. So, like, all here for that. And one of the characters in this is actually bi. Found out from the author afterwards. So... Yeah, the book itself, the cover, the M pages are pretty, and then under Dust Jacket, it's like bright red and says, let them fear her, and it's so pretty, and the book is awesome, and I cannot wait, cannot wait for the sequel. I picked up a copy of Traitor's Ruin off of Book Outlet by Aaron Beattie. This is book two after The Traitor's Kiss. Uh, the arc for book number three came into my office at work, and I realized I still hadn't been able to find a physical copy. And then, lo and behold, someone sent me a message saying, hey girl, I know you're looking for this. It's up again. So, picked it up. Huzzah. Uh, discount books. Always, always praise be. Can always take a deal in Canada. And, yeah, I just, I remember very little about the first book, actually. I should probably read the first book again. <laughs> My pre-order copy of Sky Without Stars also came in a couple of days early by Jody, uh, jo sorry, Joanne Rendell and Jessica Brody. I, the, the globe has like the bronze brass color on it is lifted. Oh, it feels so good. Um, it's got all these, I hope people notice it when they pick it up, but it's got like a blurred in the background fleur de lis. I hope to get to this soon. Um, it's a re a space, um, Les Mis retelling with some like Lunar Chronicles influences. So I was like, cool. I want to read Les Mis to know what the heck I'm reading and retelling up. So that's what I'm currently doing. And I found out after it showed up that apparently there's two different under dust jacket emblems. I got, I think this one is the refugee one. Um, there's apparently another one. I can't remember what it looks like or what it's supposed to stand for, but. My friend Meg sent me Christmas gifts. Yes. Yeah, I got my Christmas gifts in March from her. Um, so she's uh, found a couple things that she wanted me to have. So first off being, I own a physical arc of The Hunger Games now. Like, the. The Hunger Games. And yeah, I reread that book series last year. And yeah, I just, I own an arc of it. It's just such a cool thing to have. It's like having a Harry Potter arc. You're like, what? She also sent me the arc of Twice Magic, which is book two of the Wizards of One series by Cressida Cowell. Uh, she dislikes this series immensely, but got an arc of it, and I've been harassing her for it, and she finally gave it to me. So, awesome. And lastly, she sent me an arc of a book called The Night Tagger by Yang Chu. I definitely didn't say that right. I apologize. But it came out in February. I had never heard of it. I haven't seen the cover. And then when I was at the bookstore, like, last week, randomly saw it on the shelf and went, oh, okay, that's cool. Good to know there's finished copies in my store if I like it and want to get one. So I am curious. It's colonial 1930s Malaysia, which, like, sounds, like, right up my thing. I'm, like, immensely into, like, Asian settings right now. So definitely going to try and get to this one soon. I also got my pre-order copy of A Dangerous Collaboration by Deanna Rayborn. This is book four in the Veronica Speedwell series. It's supposed to be one more book. I am reading this in the month of April. I'm obsessed with this series so much. And it's so pretty in person. It's like this peach pink. I thought it was going to be more like a neon pink. But I'm vibing on the peach pink. It's really nice. I finally picked up my own copy of The City of Brass by S.A. Chakrabarty. I read this in 2018. Really, really enjoyed it. But I... I got that copy from the library and I just really enjoyed it and I want to reread it so I can pick up book two, The Kingdom of Copper, which came out earlier this year. And I just, this series was so cool and I feel like not enough people talked about it. Maybe it's because I read mostly YA and that's mostly the community I hang out in, but like, this is an amazing fit. See, it was like an insane debut and I'm so excited for The Kingdom of Copper. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. All I'm hearing is that it's better than the first book somehow. And yeah, so now I have matching paperbacks. Speaking of Traitor's Ruin, this is my copy of Traitor's Kingdom. The arc came into my office, and I'm curious to see how this trilogy is going to end. And I like the consistency of the covers in the series, especially with the flowers. It's very, like, girly, but I can deal with it. I like it. 
in that same package. I had an entire freak out of my office for like an hour after because included in that package was Wild Savage Stars by Christina Perez. Obsessed, obsessed with this author. The, the oh my god, I can't even speak. <laughs> Sweet Black Waves, the Tristan's Old Retelling that I read in December, was absolutely amazing. It's still in my brain. I can't not think about it, like, at least once a day. It's infuriating. This is the sequel. I just, I'm, I'm scared at everything that's going to happen, but I don't care. I'm making myself, I, I made myself wait until the end of March, but that's not happening. It's on my April TBR. It's getting read. I am insanely excited because my German edition of Wondersmith, book two in the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend came in. Can I speak German? No. Or, I guess that's true. I know, like, nine American. That was when we were taught when I went to Germany. And, like, um, you know, you know, Squack and Z English. Those are, like, kind of my limited. But it's so insanely pretty. Book one I have in German as well. I have the UK, the German, and the North American editions. And, like, they just do such an amazing job. This, like, lavender is just, I'm here for it. And all of the details, like, all the crests on around. And then and the, the pages are this, like, really light lavender. It's so pretty. It's probably showing up white, but it's really light lavender with these stars. And then the underdust jacket is just also, like, insanely pretty. So... I'm just going to keep buying the UK, the US, and the German editions of this series as it keeps coming out because I have no self-control and I'm obsessed with this series. I also picked up Scorch Dragons by Amy Kaufman, book two in the Elemental series. I'm really, really hoping to get to this one in May uh, because it is middle grade May. That's, you know, a thing. And so I'm hoping to get to it. However, I'm just like, I see Scorch Dragons. I'm like, mm, maybe I should wait till like June, July because of the weather with dragons and the hot and... Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely loved Ice Bowls, which was the first book. It was amazing. It was an awesome middle grade, and it had a really cool twist, and there's this whole new concept of dragons coming into play now. So, here for dragon. My pre-order of Beware the Night came in by Jessica Fleck. This is a debut. I haven't heard a ton of stuff, uh, and the stuff I've heard is very mediocre. However, it is from Swoon Reed. So, like, I kind of seem to just vibe a lot with what Swoon puts out. It's not, like, a serious fantasy. I always just assume there's going to be some, like, hints of romance and, like, just that vibe. So hopefully it's right up my alley. The cover is just freaking gorgeous with like the gold at the top with the fish and then down below there's like the skull and then there's the glass and like this sitting on the mountain thing. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful and uh, yeah, super here for. I also got a copy finally of A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, the anthology edited by Ellen O oh and Elsie Chapman. It's a retelling anthology of Asian myths and as I've said, kind of obsessed with Asian culture and Asian settings and Asian anything really right now at this point, especially South Korean and, and Malaysian and Singapore. It's just crazy rich Asians and BTS have done things to me. Okay. I just, yeah. So I love this reading. We're getting lots of Asian rep this year as well. So I'm hoping to get to this anthology by the end of the year. I picked up books one through four of The Invisible Library by Genevieve Kogman. Book one, I believe, is The Invisible Library. I believe book two is The Masked City. Then logically, I'm assuming The Burning Page is book three. And book four is The Lost Plot. I know there's supposed to be book five. Um, it just didn't have it in paperback when I got off Book Outlet. So uh, hopefully I love this. It sounds like... A very Sam book, so I am just going to try and find a time to squeeze all four books into a monthly TBR, and yeah. I, for I think literally the first time ever, won a giveaway. I've never won a giveaway on Goodreads, plus Goodreads barely does any in Canada, um, but... My girl, Christina Perez, again, uh, under the her pen name, K.K. Perez, uh, released the Tesla Legacy last month, and I actually, this showed up after I got my pre-order finished copy, but... Oh, uh, I mean, like, yeah, also include here, I got the ARC and the finished copy of the Tesla Legacy in the month of March. Um, it's basically the same, except the spine on the finished copy is this pink, is the spine. And I'm just so excited. And the best part, because especially, again, authors really don't come to Canada on tour. And I think Perez herself also lives in the UK, so it's even harder. So she did sign it saying, Dear Samantha, embrace your power, KK, which is awesome. It's also in silver, which I feel like is correct. Like, yeah just correct. So yeah, has a finished copy and an arc from the author. And I'm just, oh, Christina Perez can just take all of my money. Like just throwing all my money at her. Just visualize that like, oh, what's his name uh, from Futurama? Blake on it. The ginger guy. Fry. 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 That gets of him like, shut up and take my money. That's this situation. 
I managed to pick up book four and seven of the Keeper of the Lost City series, Never Seen and Nightfall. I'm keeping an eye out for the paperbacks on discount prices. And actually, I'm, it doesn't even have to really be discount. These books are like insanely cheap. So like, uh, it's uh, Aladdin, which is under Simon Schuster. Like, it's an imprint of them. Like, y'all. Like, you making books affordable in Canada. I props to you. Like, books are insanely expensive in Canada, especially for low-income families. It's just not accessible. And then if you don't have a library in your community or you have to pay library memberships or if you have library fees blocking you, um, it's hard. So awesome discount prices. And that was just, like, at Walmart, not even at Book Outlet. So... Well, this one was Walmart. I think this one was Book Outlet. Yeah, there's a tag on it. But yeah, I'm just trying to collect this series. I know I'm going to like them and I'm hoping to get to book two soon. And last but absolutely not least, I love the Dreadful Tale of... Al of <laughs> I was going to say the Dreadful Tale of Alexander Bracken. The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Reading by Alexander Bracken. So much. I read it last month or the month before. It's one of the funniest books I've read in a really long time. And so when I was pre-ordering my BTS album... Uh, Map of the Soul Persona comes out April 12th, not that any of you care. Um, I had to purchase something else to get free shipping. So this was like $6, which once again, what? In Canada? Um, and I, it's just, oh, the, the lifted frame is so pretty. And oh, I just, I'm trash for the series. And I really, 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 really hope to get to book number two, the, uh, oh, Alexander, oh, I can't remember the name. Oh my God. Alistair Prince something. Um, the, the something of Prince Alistair. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. But, yeah, I'm just, oh, oh, there's a little, like, cat bat thing on the back. I didn't notice that. That's adorable. Anyways, have this book. Really excited to read the sequel, too. Those are all the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of April. Or, no, those are all the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of March. I thought I was going to be much more restrained. Like I said, in my kind of defense, one of them was a book outlet order, and I was very controlled on that book outlet order. I only got books that I was already looking at and that finally came in. And then I won uh, the, the giveaway, and I had things come from friends, and I had uh, a couple of, like, really highly anticipated pre-orders come in, which, awesome. Um, make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of these books to their Goodreads pages, and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.